Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Orrstown, Pennsylvania, and our midweek devotion on Wednesday, March 10th, 2021. I'm Pastor Bill DeHass, Interim Pastor of the Congregation, and I'm glad you're here today, and I hope you'll be blessed as you participate in this video. As a reminder, we're returning to in-person worship on Sunday, March 28th. We will continue to observe the COVID protocols, wearing masks, distancing from one another, and no singing. I will continue to offer a video version of Sunday worship for those who are not able to participate in person at this time. Sunday school and all other activities are still suspended until a later date. During Holy Week and Easter, there will be a Good Friday service at 6 p.m. On Easter, we are only having one Sunday service at 10.30 a.m. Return to the Lord your God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace, and teach us the wisdom that only comes through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The scripture reading today is from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 18 to 25. St. Paul writes, For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who were called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If I were to form a religion, a cross is the last thing with which I would start. I mean, consider what the cross was in the world of the Roman Empire in the time of Jesus. It was the lowest and most extreme form of capital punishment reserved for the worst offenders. Crucifixion was shameful, and unlike Jesus, most people who died on, the, on a cross were left there as a warning to others. This could be you. Death on a cross it's about the last place a Messiah should be and the last place you would find any revelation of God. Over the years, we have cleaned the cross up and now make them from gold and even with jewels. They're ornaments. We wear them as jewelry. Yes, we still talk about the cross in terms of our personal sins being forgiven, but I wonder if we ever consider how ridiculous the earliest Christians sounded as they proclaimed the cross as the very place where God is defined and God meets us. In the world of St. Paul, Jews saw crucifixion as scandalous. Deuteronomy says that anyone who hangs on a tree is cursed. The rest of the world, which Paul calls the Greeks, see the cross is foolishness. The actual word is moronic. The Greeks prized both strength, but even more wisdom. The cross was neither. Paul's message was Christ crucified. Paul notes that that does not compute for either Jew or Greek. However, Paul notes that while the cross is foolishness to the perishing, it is the power of God for those who are being saved. 
Paul was writing all of this in the letter we call 1 Corinthians. It's one of several letters that were exchanged between Paul and the church in Corinth over time. It seems that the Corinthian church was both beloved to Paul and at the same time the most trying and difficult bunch with whom he ever connected. We learn a lot about this church in the letter, and the main thing we learn is that they were a mess. They were fractured into smaller groups pitted against each other, and often the difference was based on one of two things, either being of different social status, such as rich and poor, or about different spiritual levels, such as those who had certain gifts of the Holy Spirit against those who did not. Fortunately, no church in our day and time suffers from divisions, either from social or theological differences. I hope you heard the sarcasm in that last sentence. As the saying goes, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Even today, we find that Christians allow societal differences to dictate how people are treated. I know in churches I have served, there were always different reactions to people who visited the church that were well-to-do and those who were not. I remember well, we had a family visit in one of the congregations I served, and after a service, one of the members approached me about them. You need to get them to join, Pastor. He's an attorney, and we could use people like that in our congregation. At the same time, I can also remember that church practically shunning a single mother with three rather rambunctious children when they worshipped. You can stop the video for a moment and think about the makeup of churches and of your church. What does it look like and who is welcome and who is not? I strayed just a bit from our scripture reading, but, but only a bit. As I said, Paul proclaimed the cross. For Paul, that did involve our salvation, our forgiveness. But the cross is much more than that. It is also a way of life. That is a distinction that many do not comprehend. They stop short and only see the cross in individual terms. Is how God saves me. The cross also calls us to a way of life and to a way of life that can run so contrary to, to the human approach to things. That was true then and now. When our culture defines us, we live in classes and hierarchies where some are deemed better than others. That infects the people of God when some Christians feel superior to others. This also happens when some Christians believe that other Christians are not Christians because of differing understandings, worship practices, interp interpretations of the Bible, and so on. This is exactly what was infecting the Corinthian church, and Paul says, enough of this. Paul proclaims Christ crucified and raised and living as Lord. The new creation has begun, and it is to be lived differently than we did in the past. So in 1 Corinthians, Paul is saying that we are to concentrate on love rather than on our knowledge, spirituality, or hierarchy. In Christ, rich and poor are equal, men and women are equal, all races are equal, and to live in the old ways or class and cliques is not of Christ. Yes, we still live in a world that will continue to categorize us, but they do not define us. Christ does that. Stop the video for a moment and consider how the church should look if we live under the lordship of the crucified and living Christ. What do we have to offer to people that they do not find in other areas of life? Yes, we believe and live in the foolishness of the cross because we know that the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom and because we know that the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Let us pray. Gracious and life-giving God, we thank you for your foolish wisdom and your weak strength. We thank you for the good news of Jesus who died and was raised for us and under whose lordship we live. 
Give us always to live in ways that resemble your kingdom rather than the ways of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Gathering into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.